The metal counters in the session today, 5% up for Hindalco, sale is up 4.5, Tata Steel is up 2.5. Uh, so a lot of these stocks are doing very, very well. And we have one more guest in our studio who is probably bullish on the metal space at large too, Rajat Sharma. Uh, thanks so much for joining in. Um, what's the sense? There's a bit of a bounce in commodity names by and large. Commodities too have not done too badly. Uh, what are you doing? Um, what, what is the base view of the house on, on the commodity names? Yeah, so near the metal side, I think uh, broadly we remain uh, negative on most large cap metal producers. The reason mm -hmm. for that is I think the data that we've seen coming in from China, iron ore prices have surged 46% since the beginning of this year. And you know, with Chinese data, you can never be mm -hmm. sure. So metal producers, I think, will continue to struggle. This looks like a temporary bounce back. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, there is one small cap stock which we've uh, added to our portfolio, which is... Uh, Rama Steel. Yeah, but we'll talk about that in moments from now, Rajat. I, I just, uh, uh, you know, the reason is, uh, uh, I just want to first uh, bring up the stock price and show viewers what it is doing. It's 87 rupees, but it's a company with 130 crore market cap. So it's not a mid cap, it's a small cap, a micro cap. I want to qualify that before I get in Rajat to speak about it. So be very careful and do your own research before you get into this stock. Now, Rajat, why Absolutely. such a small cap company? Yeah, so uh, the company recently won an order of 33 crores with a JV partner to uh, make these transmission lines in Uttarakhand. They'd be manufacturing these steel poles mm -hmm. uh, for those transmission lines. What's interesting about this company is that uh, uh, it, it actually weak metal prices help companies like these because you have to clearly differentiate companies like these with steel producers. Here, uh, steel, they're a margin play company. So if steel prices are low, it really helps them sell the finished product. And with the smart city projects, I expect the demand for these steel poles to go up mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the coming time. The company on the back of some order inflows has uh, expanded its capacity. They're setting up a new plant in Khopoli, which will double its uh, uh, capacity to 340,000 metric tons. Mm -hmm. So it's a very small cap, as you said. Uh, I'm, I'm, I uh, remained bullish on this stock. I've had this in my portfolio for a while. So that's the only steel Debt, stock. Debt, etc. not a problem? Uh, they are looking to raise funds. So debt right now is, uh, is a concern for this company. Hmm. But uh, they're talking to a lot of uh, funding uh, companies to raise debt. That's mainly to expand capacity in Kopoli, and this will be done in tranches. So, what's the current debt equity? If you if you have a handle on that, for I Roma? think uh, it was uh, one is to two point two okay. uh, debt to equity. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair call. So, standard disclosures, of course, that it's a small cap stock, uh, eighty seven half, one hundred and thirty crore market cap. Uh, but uh, Rajat Sharma expects the demand for the products that they manufacture, steel poles. Uh, to be used in the smart cities uh, and with the number of smart cities that are coming up, Rajat believes the stock could do very well. 87.5 currently. Let's see if there are good times in store for this one. No, no, an IDBI bank as well. Uh, do you buy the cleanup act? The transition actually. Yeah, Tanvir, so I've uh, had IDBI again in my portfolio and I've recommended this stock uh, before. Uh, what I think is uh, uh, working really well for IDBI is that the government holding in this bank is still at 80%. And that gives government that headroom to divest a substantial stake in this bank. Uh, recently, IDBI uh, uh, spoke about planning some, no selling some non-core assets. And I think the traditional land bank they're sitting on, they can actually clean up this mess themselves. And they've come out and said, we don't need funding from the government. So I think IDBI should do really well because the government is clearly going the privatization oh, no, way. So within the public sector banking space, I think IDBI remains the top pick for sure. Hmm. I'd like to get into aviation at this stage. Uh, SJVN is your next idea, Rajat? Uh, yes, Sanveer. I think uh, within the power space, and I'm, I've been very bullish on power for a while. These stocks have not performed at all for the last many years. Uh, the government has made a lot of efforts to improve things on the infrastructure side, and especially on the power transmission and uh, uh, state electricity board's uh, uh, debt problems. So when you look at the power space, I think 90% of your job gets cut down because most of these stocks are trading with such high levels of debt that you would not like to buy them. But SJVN is one of the only stocks where uh, the company operates with absolutely no debt on its books. It's very negligible debt, I think, very little debt on its books and currently is trading with a dividend yield of about 3.75%. So it's one of those safe stocks you can buy and hold in your, uh, in your portfolio. Currently, they produce 2,000 megawatts of electricity, 
and by 2020 they're planning to scale that up to about 10,000 megawatts. Mm -hmm. They're entirely into wind and hydro and that's where the major push from the government side is coming from. Uh, one more thing that I think makes uh, this a definite buy for me is the fact that the new UMPP policy of the government, mm -hmm. uh, it would be companies which do not have debt on their books which could go to banks and ask for this debt to make these big power projects. So I think these kind of companies with little debt and there's hardly any th there in the power sector should actually benefit the most from that. Mm. Now, I hope you're right, uh, Rajat. My only problem with SJVN is that ever since it came out of the IPO some donkey's years back at 36, mm -hmm. I don't think it's shown that price again. So people who invested into that government IPO thinking it's all safe and hunky-dory have not made money at all. But, but, but on that news, if you look at all the other power stocks, look at how much they've You're corrected. They've destroyed uh, so yeah, I mean that's, thing. and whenever this up move happens in power stocks, whenever things improve, it mm. would be companies which do not have debt on their books, which will be able to, you know, uh, bid for these new projects, take more loans. Mm. All the other companies which have corrected so much, where is the capacity for any True. bank to extend any loans to them? Okay, some updates very quickly. Uh, just a quick detour on the primary markets because uh, uh, we'll just be shutting. But Rajat, Infibeam, uh, fully subscribed as of 2 p.m. I'm sure it's gone up a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, it obviously looks expensive, terribly expensive. 175 crores of sales. They want a market cap of 2,300 crores on a pad of 7 crores for the first 6 or 9 months. Subscribe, avoid. No, I, I wouldn't subscribe there. But that's, I mean, two reasons there. First is my, uh, my negative view on the online retail space in general. Mm. I mean, this is a space which started with the premise that we can do it cheaper than the brick and mortar. We mm. can do it uh, far more efficiently. And today they've completely switched the stance and said, we need now big money to expand. Mm. Yeah. And, and the they don't even have a very strong okay. profit. Rajat, I mean, I'll take the follow-up so within a bit yeah. Yeah. before we let you go. Bullish, bearish, neutral, similar question to you. No, I think uh, markets right now where they are, are uh, slightly expensive, but uh, they've been this expensive for a while now. Mm -hmm. Going forward, I think the uh, uh, key trigger would be how earnings pan out in the next uh, couple of weeks. We'll start getting the fourth quarter earnings. Uh, but one thing I will say that even in these really expensive markets, because of the kind of correction we saw in the last two, three months, a lot of the large blue chip stocks are now available at really cheap prices. So one stock which we added to our portfolio was ONGC. And again, it's right now available at uh, 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 price earnings of 11, which is its historic lows, really. Uh, it's got a dividend yield of 4.5%. And the company has reserves of 1,80,000 crores and a debt of about 48,000 crores. So I don't expect your dividends to be in any kind of uh, you, you know, threat going forward. Plus, there's been a lot of development in this sector, whether it's uh, uh, discretion in price discovery, mm -hmm sorry, discussion in uh, uh, pricing of uh, new discoveries hmm. or uh, uh, expansion, the company is uh, planning to acquire a company in Russia. So yes. I think fundamentally also everything is looking really great for this company. So I think this is the time when you buy these kind of blue chips in your portfolio and hold on to them. So while markets are expensive, there are select stocks which have become really cheap because of this correction and you'd buy them right now. And the next time we have you, we'll talk about more such ideas as well, Rajat. <laughs> so good having you. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. in and Thanks. have a great holy.